Welcome to Retrospective Meeting Facilitation. This is the third of three major video lectures in this section. The previous video was Planning Meeting Facilitation, and what you'll be doing next is completing the three homework assignments. If you're following the suggested plan of spending 30 minutes a day on this course, this will be day two of this week, with the homework assignments taking up the next five days. So here's the nitty gritty of what we're going to be doing in this video lecture. We're going to be talking about how to facilitate the retrospective meeting. We'll start off with a handful of retrospective techniques, and then we'll talk about what you do as the Scrum Master facilitating the retrospective meeting before the meeting, during the meeting, and after the meeting. The outcome will be that you'll have a clear understanding of what you need to do to facilitate the retrospective meeting. So let's start off with five retrospective techniques. The first three are quite well known. What went well, what can be improved, action plan. The next is start, stop, more of, less of, keep doing. The next one is five whys or root cause analysis, then seven dwarves, and then the appreciation game. We'll take each one of these in turn. The idea here is that as the scrum master, you need to select a technique to use at the retrospective. Very often, teams will start off with the very first one. What went well? What can be improved? Action plan. After a while, that will become a little bit stale, and you'll want to turn to one of the other techniques to liven things up. The first one is very simple. You start off by asking each team member what went well, and you record the answers, ideally on a big visible chart. Either an easel pad or a whiteboard is what's most commonly used. Then you ask the same question for what can be improved. Make sure that you spend some time on what went well. It's very easy for teams to focus on what isn't going well or what can be improved. So take time to get the first question. And then once you've recorded the answers to what went well and what can be improved, you use dot voting or fist of five or something else to select one of the items in the what can be improved list and then you create an action plan for improving that item. So let's say, for example, that the team says that there were too many bugs, and they decide that that's what's going to be their top issue. They want to put an action plan against it. And their action plan involves writing more unit tests. Then you'll help them create that plan, and then during the next sprint, they'll implement that action plan. And you'll carry that action plan into the next retrospective to revisit it. Here's the next technique. Start, stop, more of, less of, keep doing. Create five lists labeled as follows. Start, stop, more of, less of, keep doing. Give the team members sticky notes and ask them to brainstorm items that belong to those five lists. Then put the sticky notes on the list and then lead a discussion about the items that are most pressing for the team. And as always, select some items to put on the improvement backlog and actually work against them during the next sprint. The five whys. You ask five whys around a problem. So start off by picking the problem and then ask why five times. And then conclude by deciding at what level you're going to address the problem during the next sprint. Here's an example. Let's say that the problem is the server crashed. Why number one is, why did the server crash? The answer is, because it ran out of memory. Why number two, why did it run out of memory? The answer is, because the code had a memory leak. Why number three? Why did the code have a memory leak? Because it was improperly tested. Why was it improperly tested? Because we ran out of time in the sprint. Why did we run out of time? Because we took too much work into the sprint. So you see that the final why, the final answer, is radically different than what the initial superficial problem statement was. That's the great advantage of this technique. This is something that you can do today. You can go to your team and say, let's run five whys on the most recent issue that we've had. The next technique is a lesser known technique. I call it the seven dwarves. You start off by just reminding folks what the names of the seven dwarves are. They're listed here, bashful, doc, dopey, grumpy, happy, sleepy, sneezy. Then you go through each team member and you say, okay, we're gonna do this exercise for Alice. And all of the other team members select the dwarf that reminds them of that person. They write it down on the index card, and they hand the index card to that person. And you do that for each person on the team. 
And once we've gone through all of the team members, then we open up the cards, the team member reads them out loud, and we have a discussion. The idea is to get at interpersonal issues. The appreciation game. Each member of the team gives an appreciation to each of the other members. The goal here is to make the appreciation as specific as possible. So a great appreciation is, Alex, thanks for helping me to unit test the addition method. A not so great appreciation is, Alice, thanks for being great. So each team member will appreciate each of the other team members. So those are five techniques. Let's talk about the retrospective prime directive. So we talked about that way back in section two. So a question for you to ask yourself as the facilitator of the retrospective is, do you want to use the prime directive? And if you do, do you want to use the standard directive or the needs-based directive that I arrived at after doing careful analysis and research in section two? So recall that the standard directive is, regardless of what we discover, we understand and truly believe that everyone did the best job they could, given what they knew at the time, their skills and abilities, the resources available, and the situation at hand. The needs-based directive is, everyone is doing the best they can to meet their needs given their knowledge, skill, and resources. So decide whether or not you want to use a prime directive at the beginning of your sprint retrospective, and if so, which one. Okay, so let's now dig into the before, during, and after. The attendees, the product owner, development team is absolutely required. In the retrospective, you almost never have other folks almost never have other folks. This is a team meeting and we want to make sure that the team is safe from any interference. How long is the retrospective? It's three hours for a four week sprint, 90 minutes for a two week sprint, and 45 minutes for a one week sprint. You have to prepare your materials and equipment, projector, easel pad, pens and paper, sticky notes. Review the improvement and impediment backlog along with the action plan from the previous retrospective. Often you'll want to collect some data, bring it in with the information that you have so that the team can review. You may want to review the sprint retrospective agreement, which we'll be talking about in section five. You review your observations journal and then make an entry into your expectations and emotions journal. Then prepare the PTAS. Remember that from the general overview facilitation lecture in this section. So I think you're experienced enough at this point to create your own PTAS, so go ahead and do that for the retrospective. Select a retrospective technique. It could be one of those five that we've already discussed, or it can be something else. And then bring in artifacts, data, graphs, etc., that the team will want to have while going through their retrospective. If you have a burn down chart, definitely bring that in. Now, during the retrospective, remember, that the retrospective is a formal meeting to execute, inspect, and adapt. The focus is on the people, not on the product. The review is the meeting where we discuss the product. The retrospective is where we talk about people, processes, tools, how people are working together. So we're not critiquing the product and describing how to make the product better. We're talking about how to improve the way we work. And the output is a plan for improvement. So your opening is to work through PTA, purpose, time, and agenda. Review the sprint retrospective agreement if it's necessary. Review team norms if they're necessary. Execute your sprint technique, okay? Remember to take visible notes, probably on an easel pad or whiteboard. Afterwards, update the improvement and impediment backlog. Update your observations, expectations, and emotions journals support the team in executing its proposed improvement plan, and the team may have decide to publish notes, so you may wanna go ahead and do that. So the next step in this section is to complete the three homework assignments over the course of the next five days. One of them focuses on the retrospective, one of them focuses on planning, and one of them focuses on general facilitation techniques. So in summary, here's what you've learned in this video. You've learned five retrospective techniques, and you've learned how to prepare for the meeting, what to do during the meeting, and what to do after the meeting. Have fun.